What am I looking at? Am I supposed to storm chase? I thought I was playing a storm chasing game. Have you found yourself asking the same thing? Have you ever loaded into a blank radar wondering, what do I do? Wonder no longer. Welcome to DA Plays Games. This is part three of our ultimate guide to getting you started in the game Outbreak, the most realistic tornado weather simulation game out there. In this video, we're going to be going over the more nuanced information regarding the radar. Reflectivity, velocity, cape, and wind shear. Everything you could think of, we got you covered. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the basics of radar. There are two main types of radar data we'll be focusing on, reflectivity and velocity. As implied in the name, reflectivity measures how much of the radar signal is being bounced back by precipitation. Higher reflectivity means heavier precipitation like intense rain or hail. Imagine it as the radar seeing raindrops and telling us how intense the rain is. Velocity, on the other hand, shows us the speed and direction of the rain or hail particles. It helps us detect rotation in storms, which is crucial for identifying potential tornadoes. The speed and direction are also further indicated by our radar by the cloud color. Green is moving towards our Doppler weather radar, red is away. Whites and blues on the green end of that spectrum means it's moving towards us more violently. If it's moving a red, pink, and white, it's moving away from us more violently. Now, let's dive into more advanced radar interpretation. Let's talk about some key terms. ML cape, surface winds, lower and upper atmosphere winds, and the low level jet. ML cape stands for mixed layer convective available potential energy. It's a measure of the energy available for storms to grow. Think of it like the fuel for thunderstorms. Higher ML cape values mean stronger thunderstorms. Surface winds and winds in the lower and upper atmosphere show us wind shear, which is the change in wind speed and direction with height. Wind shear is essential for creating rotating storms, which can produce tornadoes. The low-level jet is a fast-moving stream of air in the lower atmosphere. Basically, it enhances storm rotation. It's like adding an extra spin or a kick, increasing the chance of tornadoes. To predict tornado formation, we have to look at wind shear and vorticity. Wind shear, as we mentioned, is the change of wind speed and direction with height. Vorticity, which at the moment we do not have a way to measure in-game, basically measures the rotation of air. We can supplement this lack of data with our data from velocity. Velocity tells us the rotation and change of direction of the uh, precipitation, excuse me. So we can use that to come to some sort of conclusion about how the air was rotating. When you see strong wind shear and high vorticity, it means the storm has the potential to rotate. Rotating storms, called supercells, are more likely to produce tornadoes. Look for radar signatures like hook echoes, which indicate strong rotation. During gameplay, strategically place yourself on roads with routes to different storm systems. Monitor your radar for changes in reflectivity and velocity. Use your knowledge of ML cape, wind shear, and the low-level jet to predict where and when a tornado might form. Position yourself safely to get the best view and place your probe without dying, which can happen in this game. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to pull off close range intercepts and get insane wow, visuals. It's so pretty. Let's take a look at some historical tornado events and their radar signatures. By studying these examples, we can better understand storm behavior and outbreak since it's built on accurate weather uh, models. Here you can see an example of the Joplin tornado. On the left, you can see the very pronounced hook. And on the right, a uh, very high intensity red versus green and the very whites in the center, indicating very strong rotation. This one is the El Reno tornado of 2013. On the right hand side, you can see our very pronounced reflectivity hook echo. And on the left, the tornado is very clearly pronounced on the radar as the green and a sea of red and very high indicators of rotation with uh, those high markers, those pinks and whites. Here's some expert tips. Always stay aware of your surroundings and prioritize your safety. If the tornado is looking like it's not moving, it's moving towards you, so get out of the way. Use multiple radar views to get a complete picture of the storm. Keep an eye on the sky for visual cues like wall clouds and funnel clouds. And 
Everyone just joining, you missed a crazy tornado, honestly. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. This has been an ultimate guide to reading the weather radar in Outbreak. We hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more storm chasing tutorials. Stay safe and happy chasing.